hello and thank you very much for joining in this mind mastery video we are all aware of the concept of the true self and the false self and many people will tell you that if you want to be happy if you want to be healthy on that psychological level and if you want to live your life to the best of your ability then developing your true self and living through your true self will help you to achieve those goals whereas if we live through our false self and allow this false self to manifest itself too often then um, we might get to a point of feeling stuck feeling like we are not happy we are not doing what we really want to do perhaps we might feel like our needs are not getting met and so on and forth so the, the first thing to understand is that developing your true self and expressing your true self is a long journey it's not something that it can happen overnight it's not something that it you know happens on its own because if we don't put any work then we're gonna get entangled into the false self why i'm gonna go to this in a minute basically the idea of the true self embraces the fact that there is a coherence between what you think what you feel and how you act that's very a basic definition of, of what the true self is so this coherence between all aspects of your being all aspects of your personality is the very basis of of the true self whereas in contrast someone who is very influenced by the false self um, will experience certain conflicts certain disharmonies between uh, various aspects of their being now the conflicts themselves are not bad we all experience different conflicts we might be you know very easily conflicted about certain things and we might feel like sometimes we want one thing but then we start doing something completely different so that's very natural for every human being and someone with the highly developed true self will be able to go through this conflict without compromising too much of the true self without compromising too much of the general well-being, if you like. To help us fully understand the idea of the true self, I'd like to first describe what the false self is. Despite the general idea that the false self is something reserved just for people with, for example, personality disorders or other mental health issues, actually we all have a false self. It could be called the, the anti-self, it could be called our shadow, it could be called our persona, if you like. It depends on how you look at this issue. But the most important thing to realize is that every person has a true self and every person has a false self. So it's not something reserved just for people with serious mental health difficulties, if you like. So what the false self truly is, my perspective on the false self is that the false self is actually our persona it could be even equal with our persona because our persona is something that allows us to act in the world and it's developed through the whole socialization process when we learn what to do in order to i don't know gain respect from other people what to do in order to have harmonious relationships with the society and this whole idea of the persona so the whole concept of the persona is not just related to your identity and you know your social status your job or academic su success and so on and forth but it also encom encompasses different criticism or self-judgment or self-evaluation that you might experience for instance you might judge yourself to be such and such but when you investigate this judgment you will actually find out that it's coming from the society, from this deep-seated need for approval, for, you know, feeling included in, in a particular group or community and so on and forth. So the persona itself actually is quite useful. Actually, it's even quite necessary in order to function in the world because it allows you to know the social rules. It allows you to know how to act in particular situations. And also, it helps you to keep the boundaries between yourself and the world outside you so that, you know, you don't have to reveal everything at once to someone. You can keep this uh, safe space 
within you, if you like, which um, is very private. And, you know, everyone has a right to keep this safe and private space within them. The problem might start when someone over-identifies with a persona, when their opinions become someone else's opinions, where they believes and how they interpret the world are not really their own but come from other people come from what they've read about what they talked about with someone and so on and forth i mean don't get me wrong we all adopt certain opinions which belong to other people for example someone more intelligent or competent than us for example we might also read about something and simply agree with it which will become our own opinion. But the difference between someone who kind of over-identifies with a persona and someone who doesn't, who knows what their true self is, is that someone with that strongly developed relationship to their true self is able to think critically about what they hear, what they read. They are able to, you know, integrate information coming from from outside into the whole personality they you know if they feel something is not right they will not blindly follow it just because other people approve of it and so there's again this coherence between what they feel how they feel about something what they believe and how they act in the world whereas for someone who over identifies with a persona over identifies with a false self if you like taken to an extreme Uh, doesn't have that good relationship or good harmony between uh, their feelings, their thoughts, their beliefs and their actions. Simple Simple as that. Now, again, I don't really say that persona equals the false self, but rather that if we over identify with the persona, if we assume that our persona is our self and is a true and complete representation of ourself, that would, that's where the problem starts, and that's how we develop the, the false self. So, in very short, perhaps the development of the true self uh, could be also described as the individuation process, because when we develop the true self, we can see beyond the persona. We know that we are more than just the persona. We know that we have these various complexities inside ourselves, And we know that, uh, in a way, we are the center of our own world. Not in a general sense, but we respect our subjectivity. And we know that all our feelings matter, or our opinions matter. I don't mean in a general sense that, you know, we are the most important people in the world, or that we are the center of the whole universe. Nothing like that, but that we have a respect for for our whole for our whole being and only then we can develop certain boundaries between ourselves and the external environment and only then as a choice as an act of choice we can appropriately a- adapt to the society not through the compulsion as someone with an overdeveloped persona does usually uh, but through our choice not through the duty, not through something that we must do, but as simply a choice, something that we choose to do, something that we want to do, not because we have to, not because we must, but we simply want to. So, as I was saying, the development of the true self is process, it's a long journey. I'm not sure if it ever ends at all, but it's definitely a journey uh, where we constantly learn about ourselves, where we develop different parts of our personality, where we increase our awareness of this different aspects of ourselves so that we know that we are not the persona, although the persona is very useful uh, and we can use it as a tool in order to interact with the world around us. We know that we are much more than this. Uh, and if we go deeper, then we know that we are not also our ego. It's just you know, the center of our consciousness, but it's not the whole personality. And, you know, the the deeper you go, the more things about yourself you start to see, the different aspects, the the complexities. And that's the whole development of the true self, where you know that you are not just this that you imagine yourself to be in this moment, but you are much more. You are much more than 
uh, your personality even because you know our personalities are so complex our whole minds are so complex that it's not enough to just label yourself and close yourself in a little box of you know such and such personality because it's not gonna provide you with a sufficient explanation and description of who you truly are so i hope this video helps you to understand the concept of the true self and the false self uh, a little bit better if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave a comment uh, just below the video and if you enjoy the video please like and share thank you very much